Hey folks, Technivers here. Today we are taking a look at the all new Prusa Slicer 2.4. There are several new features here to look at and we're just going to go over some of them really, really click quickly here. I am pretty impressed with some of these new options and I'm very, very happy to see this full version. So um, first, there is quite a few changes. One of the first things they changed was the slicing algorithm. So it is now a lot faster to slice, saying that it's about two times faster. Um, somewhere between two and four times faster. The average is probably closer to about 30% faster. Um, but yeah, it is faster, and that's because they used parallel uh, uh, slicing techniques in order to slice on uh, for processors with multiple cores to slice on both the cores at the same time or all four of the cores at the same time, drastically reducing the, the time needed to slice. So um, pretty good modification. There is also the mesh simplification tool, which is new. And it is a built-in function to simplify 3D meshes. So that's pretty cool as well. And it works pretty well. Um, we're not going to jump too much into that right now. Uh, we're also going to touch on the multi-material printing real slightly. That is another new addition that is uh, very, very full functional now. Um, one of the things that I want to point out is the, let's see, window. Uh, there is a shape gallery now. Uh, and you can take any of these shapes and add them to the bed. And they have lots of different purposes. What we're going to do is just show you real quickly one of the new tricks here. Add bed. Tiny little hexagon there. That's actually a bolt hole. Uh, and, and the reason that's there is for doing booleans. And I'm still figuring out how to work this new feature. I did have to delete that one that I added in because the way to do the negative volumes or subtraction, the booleans, is to right-click on the model you want to subtract from. Then go down here to add negative volume, and we're going to go ahead. We'll just use a generic box. It should be easier. Um, you can see that it's kind of see-through. And we can take and slide it into our cube here. When we slice that up, you can see that the piece that we've subtracted is gone. Super, super handy tool. It's a lot more intuitive than Kira's setting it to 0%. It's just one click of a button. And you can actually go in and let's see here. Let me go back. There we go to the regular view. And you can actually load in your own file. So load negative volume. And see if I got any. I think I got an STL on my desktop. I don't know what's here, but we'll just grab something random for the shape. Um, okay. Take that, and obviously the modifier can be scaled up and down. So I'm gonna take this, Give it a little height so it actually does something. So this is a blade for a dagger that I made. Say I wanted to make a sheath that fit the dagger perfectly. Um, this would be a good way to do it because I can just take out a dagger shaped hole. Let's go ahead and remove this. And try slicing it again. And it does slice super duper fast. Um, with this more complicated model, it is going to take a little bit longer, but it should go at a decent clip. Yep, and here we have it. It's just trying to save my file. I don't want to save it yet. But here we have our cube with the negative volume in it. So very, very handy trick. Very easy to use. The slicing algorithm in this slicer is amazing. It's rocking fast. So um, there is another feature that is pretty cool involved with this. So say I want to put my logo on the bottom here. Um, you can use a negative volume to do that, which is kind of cool. So let's try that again. Uh, add negative volume, load. Don't think I have anything in text, but we can get a good impression of it, of uh, the detail on this here. Let's shrink her down. Drag this over here. One of the other interesting things that they've implemented is the ability to cut off the bottom of the model with the build plate. So now, if I take this model and I lower it, 
and see that there's that piece that's coming out the bottom it'll just cut that off and we'll see that in a second when we slice as well let's get in here change this what I'm looking for basically is just a negative imprint of this handle design We gotta make sure that it's in there just a little bit. There we go. We'll slice that. We should get a nice uh, pattern there. There we go. Um, which is really good for putting logos and stuff like that into things if you need to mark a model or something like that. Um, there's also a handy new. I don't know if you've seen Clippy or not. Um, Spruce Clippy down here. We're gonna do a video on just these tips because there's some really really good tips in here. This is you know you can print each model on the platter with a different layer height. And there are a ton of these. You can actually open it up in the browser, which we're not going to do. Or you can close it, or you can scroll through some of the hints. So, really, really cool. Um, we are missing a couple other things here. Let's move on. Uh, fuzzy surfaces. That is now a thing. You can do fuzzy skin on a model. And... Um, add modifier... Those are just different shapes. So, uh, fuzzy skin. There it is. Add settings. So you can make it fuzzy. Uh, we'll just do the regular. I didn't click it, did I? Fuzzy skin. You can see here it says sinking. Um, that's because it's below the plate. Let's slice this. All right. So the fuzzy skin pattern is saying none. So let's do outside walls. Slice it again, you can see there is the fuzzy skin. With those different parameters, it gave us an option to change them, kind of make them different. Um, but you can see it is not printing anything that's under the build plate here, which is kind of cool. And there's still some other things to go over here. So um, let's see, let's see. Uh, one of the other cool things is the MSLA. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. They do have some MSLA options in here. But one of the other cool things that I was interested in was the multi-material uh, painting. You can actually go in and paint different colors for different nozzles, which is really, really cool. I'm not going to demonstrate that. I don't have a two-nozzle machine set up on Prusa Slicer. I do have one, but I haven't used it with it yet. So um, I plan on dialing in those settings and using this quite a bit because as far as that goes, being able to paint one model two different colors and get it to print multi-material is awesome as opposed to uh, the other way where you have to actually make two different models, line them up perfectly, and it's kind of annoying. So um, very, very happy overall with the changes to Prusa Slicer 2.4. If there's anything I missed, let me know down in the comments. I know I didn't go over everything, but uh, definitely check this out. It's got some major advantages over Kira. The only thing that I don't like about this is sometimes the interface. There is a lot of stuff in here. If you go to expert mode, there you have print settings, filament settings, printer settings, and all of these have quite a bit of stuff for you to look at in expert mode. But that is because it allows you to change so many things. And, and getting used to it and familiar with this software is very, very highly recommended. And you can start at the simple level and work your way up to the advanced and then expert settings, dialing in your print profile along the way. But if you haven't tried Prusa Slicer, I definitely recommend giving it a go. I'll put a link in, in the uh, description down below. And don't forget to leave a like, guys. Hit that subscribe button, and we will see you in the next video. Technivers out.